And then we move over to SmackDown. They put 15,000 people in Washington, D.C. for this broadcast, which is amazing. Well, they said 15,000. Well, it was, it had to be around 12 or 13 because it was full and it's a big building. Hey, if you were a WWE fan and for whatever reason, both shows were in your town within a very short period of time and you could only pick one, which one would you go to? Raw or SmackDown? SmackDown. Because uh, at least, uh, again, this f***ing Raw three hours and it goes on and on, at least SmackDown, you would have a bigger chance of seeing the bloodline and you'd get to the fucking meat of the matter quicker. But uh, that's like choosing a gas t- chamber or the electric chair at this point, isn't it? Uh, but uh, But then again... As I mentioned on the open of, of Raw, when they just had Jimmy Uso and Solo, here it's the bloodline entrance. Roman, Heyman, Solo, Jimmy, only Jay was missing, and it's just huge that way. It has a whole different fucking look and feel, and the people are into it. Again, the girl ring announcer trying to gargle razor blades like Vince at WrestleMania fucking <laughs> three. I just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they all do that now. I don't know why. I'm afraid she's going to give herself some kind of accidental hysterectomy doing that over and over every week. The that. Uh, well, see, you know, you've been doing that mothership thing for so long. They've told you you can ne- you can never have children now as a result of that. What do you mean? I've had kids and I'm... I mean, you yourself. More. You know, Suzanne had the kids. You didn't have any. You fucking strained your ovaries with that whole fucking thing you've been doing. Well, this is SmackDown we're talking about. (laughs) All right. Well, we're going back. We're going to acknowledge Roman. Get that over with. And then as soon as Roman says, acknowledge me, ah, Cody music hits and he gets a big pop. They pop for Roman because he's a star, but they pop for Cody because they see him as a star. And he comes out and they do the whoa and... Cody, Cody, and Cody, you know, very eloquent and the mellifluous tones that just roll off his tongue. He tells Roman he's there to have a conversation man to man. There's no reason for the rest of your entourage unless you feel the need for them or whatever. And so Roma there, now they're playing mind games with each other. Roman says, tells Haman, says, wise man, leave us. <laughs> wise man, leave us. And you know what? It would have been great to see Heyman if he could have been a 60s character actor on F Troop as as one of the fucking... F Troop? As one of the Hakawi Indians, like the the medicine man for the Hakawis. That would have been classic. And the feathers... Well, nevertheless. Anyway, so Cody's there, and boom, face-to-face, and Roman says, wise man, leave us. And Paul says, I'll leave so... Nope, Solo goes to... And that was a perfect way to get, because now there was no need for them to gang jump Cody. They do it all the time. This already has interest. They're doing it differently. So that's a reason to get them out of the way. And then they start fucking with each other mentally. Roman lays the belts in front of Cody. So what do you want to talk about? And Cody puts Roman Reigns over, but hey, climbing mountains is my thing. Said I wouldn't get over Stardust. They said, they said, 10,000 people wouldn't come to see me and my little buddy's indie show, which was very fucking uh, an interesting line. It may not have gotten over in a previous administration. But the point he made is that Roman Reigns, beating Roman Reigns, not impossible for him. And Cody was getting chance again. You know, the people are into that. And then Roman was off the charts here, just with the naturalness and the inflation. You believe this. You know, he. He mocks Cody. He said, well, you, you ever, you ever won that belt? You ever even competed for one of these? You ever main evented WrestleMania? I, I done did all of that. And I've been groomed by my father and your father too. He did the dusty impression. They put dusty over and how close they were. And then he said, you know what dusty always said about you? Nothing like you did not exist. I know you miss him. I miss him too. If there's anything he didn't teach you, I will. What a fucking promo. 
And the zingers from, from both of were getting ooze from the people because they were listening to what was being said back and forth. How long has it been since you heard the old ooh from a zinger from a heel or baby face? You know, they might pop if they hear the word shit. I'll kick that shit out of here. I'll shove this up your ass. Whoa, but. But when you say, and your mother, I, you know, fucking filleted her or whatever. Ooh. So anyway, then, and Roman offers the handshake after he's just decimated Cody and, you know, emasculated him. And in Cody, he started beating around the bush to where the people, I don't think, actually knew where he was going. I wasn't sure. But then he balled it up and finished well with, if all the things that you have said, Roman, are true, then that means it is a necessity that I beat you at WrestleMania for all those reasons, blah, 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 and may the best man win and grabs and shakes the hand that now Roman is like, ah. Uh. And that was a nice piece of business. What'd you think? I thought this was excellent. Can't really say too much bad about it. I'll say one really good thing. You know, a lot of the times in AEW, Cody came across as utterly pretentious on the mic. We we said that. And he admitted that he would go and, what was the word that, um... Workshop. Well, workshop. Yes. His promos. I'm not saying he's not doing that now, but it's very interesting that a lot of the ways he says things and a lot of the specific wording, things that did not seem natural to him in AEW... It's working a lot better here in this program, on these shows, and the fans are reacting to it in a way that they did not in AEW after the first few months. It's a different presentation. And as I said earlier, you know, a lot of this is talking and acting, and they want the guys to be actors. Well, Cody's a, a pretty decent actor as a wrestler or for a wrestler. And over in the other company, there were a few good talkers and a few good wrestlers, but there weren't a lot of decent actors. So there was nobody for him to do this. And when you've got somebody doing something that nobody else is doing in a style that nobody else is doing it on that program, it kind of comes off as odd. But this is his, his wheelhouse, as they say, in the Merchant Marine or wherever. Uh, Rhea Ripley beat Liv Morgan. Hopefully the Liv, the Liv Morgan being invincible is over. And then they continued the bloodline deal, and there will be an ultimatum here at the end, but they continued the bloodline issue through the show where basically Jimmy is telling Roman, hey, Jay, just need, he needs some more time. And he, oh, he, oh, he needs time. He needs time. I'm running out of patience. Not with Jay, <laughs> with you. You know, go bring him back in the fucking fold. And then I was going to, I was going to try to give this as much of a chance as possible. Did you watch the Dominic Mysterio with mommy versus Pablo Escobar match? A little bit, not much. Just because well, I wanted to actually just the time crunch lately. That's all. Well, I wanted to see how Dominic was doing. And honestly, and also Escobar, who was a heel, the uh, leader of the Legados, Fantasma, de, I, blah, 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 the Lucha suits, right? Well, now he's kind of taken up for Rey Mysterio because he's got such a delinquent son. And he's saying that, hey, I can teach Dominic some fucking respect. And Escobar comes out uh, with Rey's mask and you know, displaying it proudly and et cetera. And Dominic is getting better. He looks more like somebody now with the long, you know, stringy hair and the, the shit he's wearing now. Cause he ain't got a great body. So I'm not saying reveal it, but he looks, he looks better now. And mommy <laughs> makes the package and his match. They still, they get 90 seconds to the break. And when they come back, I don't know. Dom was going for a six one nine, but then he didn't do it. I think somebody was supposed to move or something was supposed to take place because then Escobar just took over and then it got awkward. And then Escobar made a comeback and a big double knockout. And I swear to God, this was the finish. 
Dominic pulls out of his boot, pulls out brass knucks right in front of the referee, and the referee sees him and argues with him and takes him off of his hand and and takes him over and throws him out to the timekeeper or wh whoever behind the referee's back while he's doing that. Ripley pulls hoo-ha out on the floor and gives him her finish on the floor and then throws him back in the ring. But somehow now, if the guy pulls out brass knuckles and the referee sees it, it's not a disqualification unless he uses them. You you can have them just hanging out in the ring, but you just can't use them. And they've made that rule now. So the distraction for the manager to do the damage to the baby face behind the referee's back was in any other goddamn company in any other world and time era in history an automatic disqualification. But now it's a referee distraction. So, and then Dominic hits Splash off the top, one, two, three. So it was a short match. Dominic looks better. Not I'm talking appearance-wise. Couldn't tell much by the work. It was a little awkward, and it had a rotten finish. That's what happened there. Uh, um, did you see the the multiple person fiasco interview segment with Drew and Seamus and L.A. Knight and I saw this and it stands out for one reason. This is the only thing I'm going to say about this because the whole thing was terrible, with one exception. A guy who has been the highlight or one of the highlights of these shows, despite being in awful feuds <laughs> since the moment he arrived, had an awful gimmick. All of a sudden, he's getting himself over, despite all this stuff, working with Bray Wyatt. To me, the story of this whole thing, uh, besides Kofi Kingston's uh, injury, which we find out after the fact, <sighs> was L.A. Knight got a massive pop. And then it got shut right back down. Yep. But he got it. They'll fix that sooner or later. So Drew McIntyre goes to the ring. He wants a match at WrestleMania, and he challenges Gunther. And in music plays, but it's not Gunther, it's Seamus. And Seamus says, what are you doing? You know how much the Intercontinental title means to me. <laughs> and they start yelling at each other, and there was a lot of accents here. And they may have enjoyed it across the pond, but for especially the southern and southeastern United States over here, it was a bit hard to keep up. But also, you know, they're they're because they've been reluctant friends, the Banger Brothers. It was going to be the Bang Brothers <laughs> until they Googled that. And the one says, do I have to ask your permission to wipe my ass, too? And S Seamus calls Drew a backstabbing bastard. And Drew says, well, you had your chance and you lost twice. So while they're arguing with each other, L.A. Knight's music plays and it gets a reaction. And here he comes with the microphone and his his catchphrases people are reacting to. And if I'd have and he he actually even referenced it. I can't imagine that this was gone over this way in the in the run through of this segment. Because if I was LA Knight, I would have said something about it like he said something about it on the microphone. Did you see how Drew and Seamus buried him completely? Yeah, I saw. As he's coming out talking to both of them, they don't quit arguing with each other. They're not using the microphone, but they're not even looking at him, looking at the entranceway. He's nebulous. He doesn't exist. He's not anything to be concerned about or worry about. He even says, hey, you might not ought to... You might not have to look at me, but you ought to listen to me. And they don't even react. And he has to get in the ring to fucking people that have turned their back on him when they didn't get a goddamn response like he got with their fucking little nattering back and forth. So if I... If I it, in a previous generation, there'd have been some fucking fisticuffs in the locker room over this unless they were told to do that just that way by somebody more important than they were, and I can't imagine why it would have been done. But then, as he gets in the ring, and they've already buried him, and now, you know, people have reacted, but nothing else. Then the New Day music plays, and here they come dancing with their fucking tromboners or whatever they're fucking carrying. It's ridiculous bullshit. And Drew and Seamus looked at them, 
Now everybody's looking at them much as you look at a goddamn train wreck when it happens right in front of you. And I, this is lost at this point. What the fuck? And I just, I started fast forwarding and I see Cross and Scarlet ended up coming out and they all got a fight. And somehow Cross was supposed to end up the last man in the ring after, again, LA Knight is proven to be feckless in this aspect. And everybody's been bumped to the floor, gone to the floor. And then finally, Cross hits Seamus from behind and grabs him and, you know, scruff of the neck of the seat of the pants and shoves him into the ring post. And he's going to take a bump to the floor. And as he goes through, hits the post, takes a bump to the floor, he landed with a, a basically a flying knee drop on Kofi Kingston, who was laying on the floor from having been previously shit-canned there. And of all of the places that Cross could have grabbed Seamus and all the four corners of the earth, he picked the one that there was people laying right underneath, and boom, and Seamus didn't see him until it was too late, and I guess now we hear Kofi's hurt, right? Apparently Kofi's out at least five weeks, possibly more. Uh, I guess what happened was the way he landed, and then there was more landing on top of that. Which... Well, I saw him holding his wrist or arm in some fashion, but because Drew was laying there, Kofi was laying there, and it looked like when I first saw it in full speed that Drew landed, or Seamus landed more on Drew because he sold it too, but then it appears that the spin and the centrifugal force came down on Kofi. Apparently so, and Kofi will be now the second member of the New Day to be out of action. <sighs> it's apparently it's it, they're going to need a new New Day. It's a new New Day. Get jo John Sanu New Day. Maybe this is a good thing to end the New Day because it's the old day, and we need something else at this point. How about another night? L.A. Knight and his and his partner another. All right. All right. Earlier th that day, the girls had gotten a fight in the back, and Shotzi, I think it was, they never actually said her name, I don't believe, but she hurt Rhonda's arm, and Shayna beat up Shotzi. So then Shayna came out with Rhonda in a sling and beat up Tegan Knox in like a minute and a half. And then poor Bobby Lashley. I swear to God. They recapped Raw with the kids' games and the foolish video and the whole nine yards, and Lashley was in the ring, and he again, in a not very exciting way, tells Bray Wyatt, come see me face to face, instead of all of this gaga. And a spooky video starts playing, and suddenly Captain Howdy, who is obviously not Bray Wyatt, right? Because Bray Wyatt's a lot fatter than this guy. Right. Right? Right. So Captain Howdy attacks Lashley from behind and beats on him and hits the, runs and hits the ropes for no reason <laughs> all the way across the ring, leaves the guy he's on top of beaten up who's not fighting back so he can run 20 feet away from the guy and then run back toward him. That always makes a lot of sense. And Bobby catches him in a spine buster and then sets up for a spear and the lights go out. Brian, there's that fucking no good on the take shyster benedict arnold turncoat trader light guy again every wrestling company how come they can't hire someone who knows how to do their lights or isn't evil with the lights well no it's it's the thing is the pressure of the bribes is too much because the people the, the wrestlers now know if you bribe the light guy you run the company so it's it's a sought after position for the graft but anyway, he's going to go for a spear on Captain Howdy, and the lights go out, and when the lights come back on, Howdy's gone, and Bobby's standing there going, what the fuck happened? And they just cut back to the Bloodline locker room, and the fans were just, huh? I, I, <clears throat> so now Bobby looks pretty fucking silly. Uh, but in the lo Bloodline locker room... Jimmy now tells Roman that Jay said that he needs more time again. <laughs> Roman, he said that? 
And Jimmy says, no, actually, he said, leave him the hell alone. And the people popped. They're playing it to the arena. And Roman's pissed, and this didn't start happening until Sammy came around. So that's the problem. We got Sammy. So you go out there with Solo tonight and get rid of Sammy, and Jay will come home. And Jimmy runs out and to do that, and then Roman tells Heyman, says, hey, Jay's got one week, or I'm not going to blame Sammy. I'm going to blame Jimmy. So there's some more intrigue. And then, and by the way, before our main event, we found out, Brian, I know you're excited about this. If you get the new WWE video game that apparently they come out every year on time and on schedule, you can now be Bugs Bunny. You mean Bad Bunny? Yeah, whatever. That's a big deal. How would, what? He's a major star. The idea that you have a major star in this game, you may get a few people that want to check it out. But why do I want to be? Why do I want to be Bugs Bunny as a wrestler? Isn't that like if if there was a baseball video game, and I went and threw out a fir first pitch at the Cincinnati Reds game, they would then would anybody want to play as Jim Cornette in a baseball video game? Depends on what your move set is. What about if my move set is to strike out and drop the ball? Do you think you can make a throw to home plate from the pitcher's mound if you had the first pitch at a Cincinnati's Red game? Cincinnati Reds, excuse me, game. And no, I, I goddamn, I tried to throw out the first pitch at the goddamn, um, oh, what was that? We went to a minor league ball game here several years ago, did an appearance. Jim Ross was there up in, uh, in uh, it's the outside Cincinnati. It's, it was the, Jesus Christ, what's the name of their team? It's right over there in Erlanger. The uh, the Erlanger Einsteins. I don't know, but anyway, it ain't that. We were all try. I tried. I th I I got. I didn't get it to the plate. I got it like somewhere to the left. I think it was of the plate, way left, like ten or twelve feet. All right. Anyway, speaking of left of the plate, we got the main event: Solo versus Sammy. And the people were up into this jump start. It was hot. Sammy was cooking. The people love him. And then suddenly Uso distracts and solo posts Sammy three times in a row. I'm not sure that the three times in a row was necessary. And then threw him over the fucking rail into the crowd and they go to the break. So even a main event that people want to see a great, you know, Matt, whatever, two minutes to the break. But when they came back, they were getting the heat on Sammy he got some, you know, fire ups and hope spots. Solo to hit the Samoan drop and went for the ass to face. And Sammy got another comeback and a two count and another one. And Uso was freaking out at that point. And then as, the, as they're cooking, Sammy goes for the kick and Jimmy jumps up and pulls Solo out of the corner. So Sammy misses the kick. And gets hung up and flummoxed in the ropes and turns around and solo hit the Samoan spike one, two, three. And so again, you know, their TV finishes are not exactly the goddamn most intricate pieces of Eddie Graham style craftsmanship ever. They just kind of get out of it. But the heels went for some more heat, got the chair, did the trash talking, put the chair on the neck. And Solo's going to go for the ass in the face, but Jimmy wants to give the ass in the face. But as Jimmy is arguing with Solo about he wanting to give the ass in the face, Sammy has recovered and throws the chair at Solo and beans him with it and hits Uso with the fucking kick and then bailed out on the floor before they could get a hold of him. And Roman Reigns is not happy or sleepy or dumpy or Doc or any of the other fucking. Various dwarves. And that was SmackDown. Surprised by the finish. Didn't expect Sammy to lose the solo here. Well, it, it didn't hurt him a bit. It didn't, but, but I'm still surprised by it. I would have liked it to have been a little bit more creative than, you know, but that's the thing. They've, they, on Raw, they'll give you a 30 minute opening match just because they've got to kill three hours and they need to start somewhere. On SmackDown, if you get a match as a main event instead of an interview, it's still kind of short to the point and they'll do a get out of it finish rather than something that really takes you on a fucking ride. 
But that's what the, that's the ride we took. Brian Last, I'll have you know.